Hey everyone, welcome to episode 32 of Heroic Nonsense and our first episode focusing on a classified figure, No Vehicle. That being the bigger than life G.I. Joe drill sergeant and all around tough guy, Sergeant Slaughter, decked out in his Mad Marauders uniform. But there's an extra special bonus this week, as we'll also have a guest appearance by the expert himself, Zazel, from Zazel's Clubhouse, who's going to speak to the very first 118 scale version of this figure. Not only is it an awesome look back at this iconic real-life Joe character and toy, but Zazel may have even pulled in a very special guest of his own. Trust me, you'll want to stick around for this. Get on the ground and give me 20. Now say that in your head in Sergeant Slaughter's voice, and you'll immediately understand why this character is so special to the Joe lore and community. His voice is iconic, his presence is intimidating, and his personality is bigger than life. First appearing in the Joe cartoon as part of the five-episode miniseries Arise, Serpenter, Arise, saving the Joes from impending destruction, and then training them and taking a lead role throughout the story, he immediately became a mainstay on the Joe team appearing in the cartoon, the 80s movie, comics, and as a live spokesperson for G.I. Joe. While we already got classified Sergeant Slaughter in his original camel uniform, here we get the Mad Marauders, or as it was originally called, Slaughter's Marauders version, which is the one I held out for simply because I wanted to have this version to go along with the rest of the Marauders' ongoing releases, and because I love this look with the blue tank top and Marauders-styled uniform. At some point, I assume they'll release a classified Triple T, which I'm sure will come with the original version as well. As for the figure, it has everything you could ever want for a Joe Drill Sergeant, with some extras that the original didn't come with, and is quite an imposing figure, using the slightly bigger mold as compared to the general mainline characters. With a ton of accessories and extra hands, which we'll explore a bit more later, you can really pose the Sarge in endless configurations to your heart's desire. I absolutely love this figure as part of our collection, and in my opinion is a must-have given how important a character he is for the Joes. So let's take a closer look now at all the awesomeness contained in this release, starting with the mold itself. It is essentially the same figure as the original classified release, but with a more vibrant uniform which I prefer over the original. The pants have that Marauder's two-tone military look that is shared with the other team members, while the tank top sports the dark blue colors that identified the Marauder's sub-specialty team, as well as a black decal of the US flag, which is a nice touch. Otherwise, other than his glasses having a blue shade and his hat being a bit darker, he is essentially the same figure and mold as the original. And if you want to have the Sarge displayed during R&R or when he really needs to get down and dirty, you can remove the hat and glasses and you have a fairly accurate replica of the real life Sarge's face with that mean down dirty look that would scare any Cobra into submission. Size wise, he is on the bigger scale of the classified line, which is accurate to his character and portrayal in the show, but doesn't look out of place next to the rest of the line. He is also in line with the other recent trainer release, this time on the Cobra side, Big Boa. You can see that they generally sport the same build and ultimately use the same arms. So when it comes to opening toys, we tend to keep them tucked away for a bit for the boys to open every so often for special occasions or when we can't hold off any longer. In this case, we haven't gotten to any of the other Mad Marauders yet and I'm itching to display them together. For now, here's how they all come together as a team, albeit all boxed up. Like the original, he also comes with his extra mini carded figure, this time in his Mad Marauders colors. I love this little bonus since the Sarge is in fact a real person and has multiple toys of him, and having this tiny figure is just such a fun little extra. He is carded just like the full size toys, even going so far as having a back that includes a fake file card and even has a flag point. As we also have these Jada Hollywood Rides vehicles, thought it would be fun to throw them all together. Surprisingly, they scale pretty much perfectly, so I'm guessing in-world classified scaled kids could actually play with these toys. A bit of inception. Getting into the accessories, let's start with this fantastic replica of Sarge's campaign hat, which stays on his head fairly well for not being a helmet, and includes a Sarge's pin on the front. As for all the other accessories, we have them here starting with those included with the original release, though with updated colors for the glasses, whistle, and swagger stick, and some new additions like the dumbbells and duffel bag. Speaking of which, that duffel bag is amazing. It can be held multiple ways by multiple straps, including by the hand or over one or both shoulders, and is made of real cloth, with a working cinch to close the bag. Here's a closer look at the dumbbells and boxing gloves extras that come with the Mad Marauder Sarge as compared to Big Boa set, with the Sarge's dumbbells having the 90 painted white. And the Sarge's gloves in blue and missing the Cobra symbol. They are removable gloves like the alternate hands are, just pull them off and on at the joint. As for replacement hands, here we have them all displayed out, the Sarge coming with four sets of different hand positions and one palm version, as well as the 
friends that come with them to complete. Hey, this is Zazel from Zazel's Clubhouse. Zazel, my number one marauder. That's right. I'm the Sarge's number one marauder. So it is my absolute pleasure to talk about the original Slaughter's Marauders, Sergeant Slaughter. This version came out in 1989 and was the first and only version of the Sarge that came carded. A repaint of the mail-away Sergeant Slaughter, this version was the last Sarge released in the original A Real American Hero line. This would mark the fourth appearance of Sergeant Slaughter as a G.I. Joe. He's decked out in Marauder's signature green, brown and blue colours, and while I have no issue with the blue colour on the Sarge, I do wish they extended some of that paint onto his wristbands. They did, however, feel it was necessary to waste some of that paint on top of his campaign cover. Sarge came with his signature swagger stick, but no firearm. But wrestling fans know that with the Cobra Clutch and the Slaughter Cannon, Sarge didn't need one. Anyway, that's all from me. You're dismissed. Yo, Joe! Played out. The Sarge coming with four sets of different hand positions and one open palm version. You can see the gloves here as well as the wristbands that come with them to complete the boxing gloves aesthetic, which can also be used separately with the bare hands and are placed on the wrist before attaching the hands or gloves. Now, what can you do with all these extra hands? Well, a whole hell of a lot. Rather than just tell you about it, how about I show you some of the different poses you can make, which are perfect for this figure, the pointy one being the best, I'd say, because of all the different possibilities. However, what I like to call open grabby hands are a ton of fun too, and can be used many ways, some of which I show here, and some of which are peppered throughout the video. I've also taken some inspiration from stills of the cartoons, so see if you can guess which ones I've borrowed from. Closed fists are always good, especially when taking out Cobra Bats, which I feel was a specialty of Sergeant Slaughter, and probably the only one who could do it as effectively. And last but not least, the Salute Hand, which is the most appropriate for this real American hero. And I won't get into the whole turn bad guy wrestling storyline here that I'm sure Zazel is much more versed in than me, and can explain a lot better on his channel. Let's start wrapping this episode up with some fun different shots of the Sarge in action, some of which, like I just said, are based off his appearances in the cartoon. My favorite ones have to be of the Sarge taking on Serpentor himself, pretty much the only Joe who could do that. I mean, they did have a lot of fight scenes together, and as much as I hate to see the Sarge losing a Cobra, I had to include Serpentor throwing Sarge over his head. We can't forget some training type images to go along with the battling Sarge ones, since his job training the Joes was as important as fighting Cobra. Seems like Sarge got himself surrounded by Cobra quite a bit, though I suspect he liked it this way. The tougher the odds, the better. This one is a funny one. If you know how the Crimson Twins work, you should be able to guess what's happening here. Hint, it also came from an episode. I've got a fever, and the only solution is more bats. Can't have any shots of Sergeant Slaughter without him taking on as many bats as possible on his own and still coming up on top. Have to throw in Nagahide here into the mix since we just opened him at the same time and figured he'd be a fun one to watch run from the Sarge. A fun one to end on, Cobra Commander gloating away at his collection of himself, thinking he has the upper hand on the Sarge. But come on, Cobra Commander should know better. You can't ever get the upper hand on Sergeant Slaughter, and there's only one package character that matters. A quick look at the packaging, I'm not the hottest on the new style and prefer the original plastic based packaging to be honest. I even like the closed cardboard ones with the great art, but I get why people would want this to be able to see the actual figures inside. At least the back has a nice realistic looking picture of the Sarge, which I think the G.I. Joe photography team does best. Overall, I really dig this figure and love that we now have him in our collection. I totally recommend going out and getting him, especially if you don't have the original. Though I feel Zazel prefers the original colors, I'm a bit partial to this Blue Marauders one, but either is awesome if you can get your hands on him. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Zazel for joining me on this review with his awesome take on the original Slaughter's Marauders Sarge. Be sure to catch him on his own channel at Zazel's Clubhouse, link here and below for a wide variety of content including reviews, live shows and trivia with tons of guests, and my favorite series, the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship, with amazing stories using the 118 scale toys and including none other than Sergeant Slaughter himself. Alright you maggots, that's it for me today. See you next week for a whole new episode and review. 
And remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Front four!